So I'm gonna give the answer right away to the title of this video. I don't see the point in upgrading. I'm using an M1 Pro model with 16 gigabytes of RAM and a 512 gigabyte SSD. It's practically perfect. This video was actually inspired by my pal Ryan. We chat about video content daily on all the time. So go check out his excellent video on his Intel MacBook Pro. He told me to make this on the M1 series. So subscribe to both of us while you're there. We'd both really appreciate it. So I've been using the M1 Pro MacBook Pro practically since it was launched. I only upgraded from my older Intel MacBook Pro, the 15 inch with the Vega 20 GPU because its battery life was starting to become abysmal and it had even been replaced once before, but the issue really seemed to persist. Plus, I actually wanted to sell my old Mac before it depreciated any further. As soon as Apple went with the M series, Intel Macs basically dropped like a stone and I thought I needed to get out of here quickly. So getting rid of the touch bar was also a major priority for me. I absolutely hated how inefficient it was. Most of the time it was just unused and underutilized, at least in my case. Around the same time as well, my PC, which I use primarily for video editing, decided to just give up the ghost and I needed a reliable, if I can say that, replacement for work projects. And honestly, I just didn't want to shell out another £3,000 for a brand new laptop, which is what my Vega 20 MacBook Pro originally cost me with Apple Care thrown on top, so it was even more expensive. So with that in mind, I opted for the first wave of refurbished M1 Pro MacBook Pros for around about, I think it was £1,100. That's a really big price discrepancy. And although I don't say that lightly, that is not a great price. I actually thought this was a good deal. I And although I will say I don't use the M1 Pro as my primary machine now, I do sometimes switch back and I don't notice a difference between that and my main machine. For a period of around four to five months until I rebuilt my PC from scratch, then switched to a Mac Studio, that's actually a story for another day, this was my primary machine. So I edit in Premiere Pro, use After Effects, edit photos and thumbnails in Photoshop, plus all of the other jazz that you do like browse the web, edit documents, store files, the basic stuff, and I still can't believe how well the base specifications have actually handled that. And while benchmark tests definitely show a performance improvement in the newer models that, well, it would be nice, I don't think it's a significant enough leap to gain maybe 20 seconds on a render that could justify the cost of upgrading for me, which could it be into the thousands. The M1 Pro chip is still really, really powerful and handles every single thing I throw at it with consummate ease. Whether I'm editing 4K video using the bloated and frustrating Creative Cloud Street, the only time I have any slowdowns or see any slowdowns is because Adobe just can't be asked to update their product properly to save their life. I have a hate-hate relationship with Adobe, whether it's PC or Mac, so you need to know that. As far as you can tell, though, I like this machine. I was worried that it might not be up to the task of someone that will absolutely batter it day in and day out. Trust me, I've really not been kind to this MacBook. It's a tool to me. I don't need to baby it. I've dinged it and I've scratched it and it doesn't make a difference. It's still sleek and smooth despite my use and abuse. Apple really hasn't changed the recipe of the MacBook Pro line since the introduction of the 14 and 16 inch models, at least when they were reintroduced. You can get some nice colors, but I don't think that matters all that much to me. So I just stuck with the one that was the cheapest and it was this particular color. You tell me what color it is, I don't know. The display also hasn't changed significantly in three to four years on the newer models. The 120 Hertz LED screen, I think it's gorgeous, but I've actually stuck a screen protector on it. As I said, I batter my MacBook, so I didn't want to damage the display as that is one of the most crucial elements of the hardware. And because you're not really buying a MacBook for gaming, I'm actually not necessarily sure that the 120 Hertz refresh rate is a really killer feature like I maybe did ahead of time. It's nice, it's really nice to have, but I don't think it's a reason to go out and buy it over another machine. I might actually in future try and set it to 60 hertz soon because I bet that probably does actually preserve some extra battery life, which is genuinely exceptional on this machine. The notch is actually more annoying for me in terms of the display. It's not that I'm not used to notches on screens. It's more that your muscle memory for apps has to change because sometimes menus or UI elements are moved in or in some cases hidden behind that notch and invisible if the person who's developed the application hasn't updated it to account for this. I hate that part. Other than that, I've got to say, it doesn't really bother me all that much. The addition of a HDMI port and an SD card slot from the 15 series from the previous generation I had has been great, but because I don't necessarily need to carry a dongle with me. With that said, I was getting by just fine with dongles and adapters. It just is a sensible set of ports on this new version. Maybe we could have a few extra USB-C ports, but for all intents and purposes, it's all good. Just going off script here for a second though, 
maybe a single connection dongle setup is actually way better in practice anyway. You just have to connect at one cable rather than have multiple to achieve the same thing and you're not actually caught in a spider web of cables. I don't know, just a thought. Maybe that single cable setup is actually a bit better. Enough waffle though. Here is the cold hard truth on why I've stuck with an older machine, although it isn't really that old in the grand scheme of things and probably will continue to do so for a long time in the future. For me, the money I would have spent on a brand new top of the line, a top tier MacBook or new laptop has been far more valuable invested in other areas of my setup and my day to day life. I've been able to upgrade my gaming PC with a brand new GPU, uh, purchase a sturdy new tripod for video recording, which I'm talking to you on right now and treat myself to a better keyboard that I'm going to use every single day. These improvements have had a tangible impact on my productivity and overall enjoyment of my work and free time. Furthermore, I'm not constantly chasing the latest upgrades and I'm able to appreciate the technology I already have and use it to its maximum. My M1 Pro MacBook Pro is a fantastic machine that meets and exceeds my needs day to day. I'd rather focus on creating and enjoying the process rather than worrying about whether I have the absolute newest hardware, which I think a lot of people do spend their time fussing over. My gaming PC is a prime example. You might have experienced this yourself if you're a PC gamer. Instead of playing and enjoying the games that you have and you can play because it starts to become a chore to eke out a few more frames by spending potentially hours tweaking, tuning, enhancing and optimizing for your specific setup. I know the limitations on this machine and working within them, it doesn't really inhibit me. That's actually quite liberating when you think about it. And that's why I don't think that you need to necessarily chase the latest and greatest all the time and just get products that bring you joy or enhance your life in ways you probably hadn't have thought of. There's also the really important environmental aspect to consider. So by choosing to stick with my current laptop, I'm potentially, or hopefully at the very least, reducing electronic waste and minimizing my environmental footprint, something I'm really conscious of because sometimes I struggle with this. I do actually review and test out lots of the latest technology and that itself does have an influence on the wider environment. Constant upgrading to the latest model contributes to the growing problem of e-waste particularly as laptops themselves are getting harder and harder to repair without distinct knowledge, the right tools, and I think it's a significant environmental and a social consequence as a result. There's one thing that actually spurred me in some ways to go for the base model, because I often see people in my industry buying a fully specced out MacBook only for that person in question to just do a little bit of editing in Lightroom, lots of browsing or working from lightweight applications. You don't necessarily need all that power. And while I do sometimes use some of the most intense daily desktop applications. I'm using a base model with zero issues. I'm basically living proof that you can flourish or at least use this in a professional setting without the top spec model every time. Ultimately though, the choice and the decision whether to upgrade is gonna be a personal one. And I don't think there's any right or wrong answer, but for me, the M1 Pro MacBook Pro is still an incredibly capable machine that offers excellent value for money. I'm more than happy to stick with it for the foreseeable future, and I believe a lot of you out there probably will too. What I'm trying to say here is that a used M1 MacBook Pro would probably be overkill for 90% of you out there. Maybe instead of looking at that newest machine, that newest shiniest colour, you could probably save yourself a ton of money by looking at something like a refurbished order model, or just a used model. I think that's what I'll do when it comes time to upgrade. Hopefully a good few years from now.